Who still would light? You have light? Alright, nice. You need to get a light inside that this is the real thing. You can't get any better than this. Welcome to Jamaica Worldwide. And today we explore the story of legendary reggae music studio, Channel One. The walls echoed with the beats of reggae and the aura exuded creativity and passion. The studio's house band, The Revolutionaries, were one of the top studio bands of the 1970s with a tremendous impact on the formation of reggae music in the mid-70s. Channel One is regarded as one of the most important studios in the history of reggae, contributing to the emergence of artists such as the Mighty Diamonds, Horace Andy, Leroy Smart, The Wailing Souls, Delroy Wilson, and of course, Jimmy Cliff. Stick with us as we go through the history of this giant in reggae music, and stick around to find out what devastating event caused its downfall. Of course, if you are not subscribed to the channel, please take time to hit that subscribe button. Also, hit the notification bell to ensure you get videos as soon as they are released. The motto of Jamaica is, out of many, one people. And for a small island, it surely defines what that statement really means. The country has a large contingent of different nationalities which have made their various contributions to the development of the country. You can find people of Irish, Spanish, Indian, European, Chinese, and of course, African descent. All these nationalities settled on the island long before its independence and helped to build the country as one people. You will even find various places across the country where different nationalities gathered and settled such as Irish Town, German Town, Cooley Town, not to mention the Maroon Settlement. Just like all other nationalities, the Chinese settled on the island coming here to seek a better life and opportunities. One could argue that one of the places there was a high concentration of Chinese immigrants was the Waltham Park and Maxfield area. As a matter of fact, Waltham Park Road is where you will find the famous Chinese Cemetery which is still utilized today. Maxfield Park Road is the stomping ground of the world famous Hu Kim brothers, comprising of Paul Ernest Kenneth and leading man of Channel One, Joseph Hu Kim. They were sons of Chinese immigrants who came to Jamaica in the mid 20th century. They're actually from the seafaring community of Greenwich Farm, a hop and skip away from Maxfield Avenue. Their family operated an ice cream parlor, jukeboxes and a small sound system which kept the family afloat despite the conditions at the time during the 60s. The Who Kims were also owners of gambling consoles, poker boxes and slot machines that would be in bars and restaurants. Managing these gambling machines was a thriving business until the government declared gambling illegal in 1970 which dragged the sector to a halt leaving them eager to find another business. Joseph also known as Jojo had an interest in music for some time and thought he could do something in that field. It was, however, when John Holt brought him to Dynamic Sound Studio that Joseph decided he would venture into the music industry and create his own recording and production studio. Ernest and Jojo converted their quaint house into a state-of-the-art recording studio. Well, not quite yet. Jojo got a tape recorder for $38,000, which was capable of recording a maximum of only four tracks. They hired Sid Buckner as engineer and started business, but there were early problems with the studio's sound. Bonnie Lee would use the studio on a consistent basis and actually recorded an album there with Alton Ellis, which he didn't release due to these same issues. The problems were however resolved within a year, and according to 2006's Caribbean popular music, the studio became widely known after the 1976 release of the Mighty Diamond's Right Time. This is one of Mighty Diamond's most popular works still today. They used the Revolutionaries as the house band and created a sound essentially driven by the innovative drumming styles of Sly Dunbar, who joined the studio in 1973. Burn this up myself. 
kind of worked very hard to get the great drum sound that Channel One has. And when we think we got it right, then we said that is okay and we start playing it. Ernest eventually learned to do the engineering and took over the engineering duties after a year. They would also have their own pressing plant and label printing workshop. Some of the other artists to have successful recordings at the studio include Horace Andy, Leroy Smart, The Wailing Souls, The Meditations, Ernest Wilson, The Jays, and Jimmy Cliff, whose Follow My Mind album was recorded there. At some point, all four brothers would have an active role in the business, being that Ernest acted as studio engineer, Joseph ran the studio, and was credited as producer. Paul ran the sound system associated with the studio, and the fourth brother, Kenneth, began producing in the 1980s. In 1977, a devastating event shook the Channel One fraternity as brother Paul Hu Kim was shot to death during a robbery in the hometown of Greenwich Farm. The family felt betrayed. Joseph entered into a deep depression after this and it was evident as production became less numerous. Eventually, the Hu Kim brothers would seize their direct activities at the studio. The hits kept coming after Paul died, but the brothers slowly lost interest in the music business. They returned to slot machines and other business interests in the late 1980s and oversaw the release of Channel One compilation albums in Europe, Japan, and the United States. They would still have producers come to the studio like Sly and Robbie and Henry Jonja Laws, but Channel One was a shell of itself. At the time, Joseph left Jamaica to escape violence on the island and established himself professionally in New York. In 1979, he renovated his Jamaican studio and began returning there every month to supervise new productions. With Ernest, he opened a subsidiary studio in New York in the early 1980s where many DJs recorded. Among them were Barrington Levy and Barry Brown. In the early 1980s, he launched the Showdown series with Clash albums. When the dancehall entered the digital era, he withdrew from the Jamaican music business shut down both studios and settled in New York permanently. The studio closed in the early 1990s. Kenneth Hu Kim died from lung cancer in October 2013 at the age of 66. Joseph Hu Kim died on September 20, 2018 in New York, age 76 after suffering from liver cancer. Through its music, Channel One Studio remains a beacon of musical brilliance and a place where dreams were realized and the heartbeats of reggae echoed through the ages. Please remember to like the video and also subscribe to the channel if you are not already subscribed. Thank you for watching. This is Jamaica Worldwide.